Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. For those of you who are here for the first time, my name is Samuel and I am a fifth and final year student doing a double degree in business and science. If you've watched my channel for a while, you know that I've spent quite a lot of time talking about my process for learning and understanding content in science. You know, from breaking down your lecture content through asking questions and then making something that's a visual representation of what you're learning. I've also spoken about my process for studying law using a very similar process of breaking down information in Notion and then organizing them as a well-designed set of word processor notes. But today, I wanna to talk to you about how I learn in business, specifically from the perspective of someone doing a marketing major. And I wanna do that by showing you one of my favorite assignments ever that I did as a part of a second year business unit that not only gave me the opportunity to understand and learn new concepts, but actually gave me a chance to apply them in a creative way to solve real and interesting problems in a way that I'd never experienced previously in my university journey. And it was a sort of eye-opening experience that gave me the thought that, you know, maybe this, this is what university should be about. So for those of you who don't know, I go to Western Sydney University. And this assignment was part of a second year business unit called the Service Enterprise, which is basically a subject where we studied the practices of businesses that provided services to customers, as opposed to products. So really quick distinction between products and services. Products are physical, tangible things. You buy a car, you buy a toy, you buy a desk. Services, on the other hand, they're intangible, they're sort of hard to store, and they're things like you know, getting a haircut, getting an education, going to daycare, getting your dog groomed. Those things are hard to tangibly hold on to, but they're services you can receive. And what's different about this unit's assignment was, you know, typically in the past, in, in science for example, a lot of the times in assignments, I'm just writing a report or a literature review where I am researching information that I am presenting to my teacher who already knows that information and just doing as I'm told. But this assignment was different because in business, they've realized that you can know all the information out there, all the marketing and service theory available, but if you can't take that information and apply it collaboratively in a team to solve a problem, then what's the point? So this assignment was designed for us as students to develop the skills to be that kind of problem solver and, and, and apply a problem solving process called design thinking to solve a service problem. And the assignment was broken up into six steps. Step number one, we had to identify a service that had a problem. Step number two, we had to understand and further research the problem to understand what was going wrong. This could be by conducting a survey, for example. Step number three, we had to build user personas. So another way of understanding this is we had to understand our customers and empathize with them. And with all that in mind, in step number four, we had to brainstorm ideas for potential solutions which could address that problem. And we had to present that visually. In step number five, we had to make a lo-fi prototype which incorporated our ideas that we could show to potential customers and get feedback. And then finally, in step number six, we make a finalized hi-fi prototype incorporating all the feedback we got from our previous step. And in the process of doing these steps and these iterations, in theory, we should come up with a solution. And just before I show you this assignment, I think it's important to note that this was a group assignment. Um, I believe it was a group of five to six team members, and we did this assignment over eight to 10 weeks. And so in my attempt to cram eight to 10 weeks worth of thinking into 15 minutes, we're only gonna be able to scratch the surface. Just to reiterate, the only reason this was doable was because I was in a team surrounded by a group of people who had a diverse set of skills and who I enjoyed working with. So, step number one, identify a service problem. Now, although a lot of people think this is the easiest step in problem solving, um, we actually spent a lot of time discussing what problem we should pursue solving. I remember telling my group, you know, this is a lot of work and we need to find a service problem that we actually care about at a personal level. Maybe something we've experienced ourselves because only then we'll be motivated to put in the work to solve it, uh, especially when things get busy and hard later in the semester. And so we brainstormed a lot of ideas in the initial weeks. And one of the areas that we ended up settling on was we wanted to fix something in the university. 
because the university as a service provides us with education and we thought, why, why don't we find a component of that that we can improve? And there was one part of Western Sydney University that we all collectively agreed could be improved. And that was our online university learning platform, also known as VUS, spelt V-U-W-S, which stands for Virtual University of Western Sydney. And this is what it looks like. And we use it every day. This is the place where we come to to find our learning materials every week, our lectures, our readings. This is the place where we read our announcements from our teachers. This is the place where we get access to our assessment information. It's the place we check every time a new grade gets released. It's basically the most important thing for a student to be checking. And when we were doing online university over the past two years, this was literally the one and only thing we were interacting with every single day, along with Zoom. And I don't know, just from experience of interacting with it every single day, it felt clunky, complicated to use, um, and I guess most importantly, we just didn't look forward to using it. And, and I think we had the consensus that things could be better, and, and we genuinely think we can contribute to making a better views. Um, and, and you can see in these paragraphs here, we were trying to justify using textbook theory why we thought this was a problem worth pursuing. But, but at the end of the day, surely, if you're providing a service for students to learn, and this is a thing that they interact with every day, you'd hope that it's something students look forward to use. And I guess the question became, how are we gonna go about doing that? Well, in order to do that, we had to get a better understanding of more students, just to confirm that our opinions of views were not just stuck in our own head, but also to get an idea of why isn't views all that it could be? And, and, and what would need to be added to, to make it the views that we all want it to be. So that's what step two of the assignment was all about, researching the service and the problem. Now for this section, while most students were doing an external service um, and might interview five to 10 customers standing outside of a cafe or a hotel, we realized we had an entire university campus full of students at Western Sydney who were using views every day. And so what we did was we made a survey on a software called Typeform, which allowed us to create a really personal and engaging survey. And we spent a really long time, you know, curating the right questions and, and making what we thought was a really good survey. But what we were trying to do was get a sense of where the student was at in their journey, their habits of how they use views, and then ask them about their opinions on views and why they felt that way. And we even asked them for potential solutions to the things they complained about. And so we took the link to that survey and we put it in literally every single group chat that we could find, Facebook group with Western Sydney University students. And we even got to the stage where we printed out these A5 handouts that had these QR codes on them. And I remember walking around campus for two entire afternoons, going up to students, explaining my assignment, the fact that we were trying to improve views um, and asking them if they were willing to fill out our survey. Um, and what's really interesting is I think a lot of students are sick and tired of being asked to do surveys because they get so many surveys all the time in their email. But surprisingly, uh, when we explained what we were doing, students were very keen to provide their opinion. Uh, and so after a week, we managed to get over 100 surveys filled out. Um, and what was really great about Typeform was it organized our information in a, in a really nice visual way for us to interpret. And the main thing we realized across the board was for the vast majority of students, views just wasn't good enough in their opinion. And they all had very different reasons as to why that was the case. But when we tried to group them into certain categories, we came up with three overarching issues that views had. Firstly, complex navigation. So for example, to access your weekly learning materials for a class, you have to navigate through multiple pages and click six different links to get to your content when really there should be a shortcut somewhere that takes you directly to the things you access frequently. Secondly, a poorly utilized homepage. So this is what the current version of views looks like. And you see that stuff in the top left-hand corner? Well, that's the stuff we as students use every day. And all that other stuff, that's the stuff that students claimed that they had barely touched in their entire time of being a student at Western. And so while yes, while this homepage is in some ways functional and does the job, there is so much improvement to be had here. And finally, the third thing, it was aesthetically unappealing. 70% of students cared about aesthetics 
and they agreed that there was nothing in this site aesthetically that made them want to look forward to using it. And I think some people might look at this feedback and say, oh, it's just a bunch of students complaining. But, but when you actually look into it, I think what you're getting from your students is the belief that, you know, views as a platform could be better and that it could be improved and we want it to be improved. And, and that's what we took out of that survey. Now, the purpose of the next section of the assignment, target market and user personas, was to understand the people who were experiencing the problem. Now in marketing, this is actually the most important step, understanding your customers, the people that you are trying to serve. And by understanding, we, we don't just mean demographics, we're talking about things like, you know, how do they think? What are their attitudes, opinions, interests? What excites them? What scares them? What are they struggling with? And after you've done that and looked at your customers, you, you can build a low resolution image of what your customer looks like. And that informs your decision making going forward. And thankfully in this assignment, since we ourselves were students too, uh, this section came very naturally to us because we know what it's like being a student with a student experience using views every single day. And we ended up coming up with two user personas. One was a hypothetical 19 year old Sally who was in her first year of university. Uh, and the other was John, someone who's gone to university a little later in life. And we've come up with certain characteristics, which you can see there. And the whole point of this is whenever you're going to develop a solution, the most important question to ask is who is it for? A and to keep that at the forefront of your decision-making process. Then we went into my favorite step, step number four, brainstorming solutions. Um, I think the key insight we had here right from the start was when we analyzed the different issues students were experiencing with views, we realized that nearly all of them could have been solved if we had a better homepage right at the start. Now, what exactly would that homepage need to do? Well, one thing I did mention at the start was when we asked students for what their issues with views were, we also asked them for what they thought potential solutions to those issues would be. And so they actually proposed solutions for what they wanted to see in views. So they'd say things like, we'd love a simpler, more intuitive user interface. We'd like shortcuts to this week's learning materials, a customizable widget section, maybe a calendar on the homepage to track assignments. And that was great because we took all these solutions the students gave us and put it in our brainstorm. So as you can see on the screen, homepage shortcuts, widgets, more prominent unit icons, etc. And, and by the way, all of these were made on good notes on the iPad and then imported into this document. Um, and so I guess the next question we asked ourselves was, okay, with all of this in mind, what could a better views actually look like? And I absolutely loved the process of trying to find a way to address all these different issues students are facing simply by designing a better home page. And we really pushed ourselves to come up with as many ideas as possible. Because um, as someone once told me, you know, once you get the bad ideas out of your mind, the, the, the good ideas start to emerge. And here are three of the good ideas that we put into our report. So this was idea number one, where we integrated the calendar and to-do list idea. And on the side, by the way, we did what's called a PMI. So that stands for plus, minus, and interesting. And it's a really quick and efficient way that you can evaluate your ideas by finding something positive, negative, and something interesting. This was idea number two, where we realized, why don't we just make our units really prominent at the top of the screen? After all, that's what students use the most, and then push everything else down. And then finally, in idea number three, we thought, why don't we add a sidebar on the left, and then on it, put some buttons and link them to some of the other important university portals that students need access to. For example, subject registrations, the library, and the timetable. And I think at the time, we kind of thought idea three was a little bit too busy. Um, and the simplicity of the way idea two addressed the problem was something that we thought was worth pursuing and refining further. Oh, and by the way, while we were doing this, we came up with the idea of what we call a unit card. So that was a large and prominent icon card thing, which had a clear icon, a unit name, a number, and then shortcuts to things students wanted to access easily. Once again, an idea that the students gave us. And so we took all these bits and pieces and we made a really quick mock-up in, I, I think this was done in GoodNotes. And this was just to show ourselves and our teacher the skeleton of what the site could look like. 
And that sketch ended up forming the foundation for the lo-fi prototype we ended up making in step five, uh, which we actually went on to present in a five to six minute video presentation in front of our class and our teachers in order to get feedback. And, and so what I think I'll do is, why don't I just play you one to two minutes of that larger video that we played in front of our class, just so you get a sense of the sort of thing we had to do um, and communicating our ideas to an audience. So we will cut to that now. You could solve most of the navigation issues on views simply by creating a better home page. You see, this is the current home page of views. And all that stuff you see highlighted there, that's the stuff that students told us that they don't actually use. And so we thought, why don't we actually fill all that space in the homepage with things students actually want? And so we came up with a whole lot of ideas and we played around with them. And this is the low five prototype we ended up with. So just to give you an overview of the features. Firstly, students wanted their units to be displayed in a more prominent way. So we did just that. The moment you log into views, you see four clearly displayed units that are easy to click on. Uh, below those icons, we place shortcuts. And those shortcuts are to things students access frequently. So for example, we have shortcuts to things like this week's learning materials, your learning guide, and your grades, which is so much more intuitive because now you can access those things from the homepage. Below that, we placed announcements, as that was one of the few features students were happy to keep. And now probably our favorite feature of our homepage we've added widgets. You see, when we ask students, what's one feature you wished was added to views? The most common response we got was the addition of a calendar and to-do list that syncs all your assessments, classes, important dates, and things like that in one location. And we've given them just that in our widget section, and there's so much functionality built into them. And finally, at the very end of the homepage, we threw in everything else. So things that the university's management might deem relevant, such as advertisements or links to student support. And so we showed this prototype to a small focus group of around 10 students that we had, and it was met with tremendous response. And I think there was unanimous agreement that this view site was better than the current view site. Um, we did, however, ask them to be a little bit critical and provide us with areas for improvement, and they gave us three. Uh, firstly, they suggested the announcement section to be moved to the top of the page to be the first thing students see. Secondly, they asked for more color to liven up the home page and make the units more distinct. And thirdly, they requested a sidebar to be added to the side of the page with shortcuts to things such as Allocate Plus and MySR. And, and so we took this feedback and we implemented it in our Hi-Fi prototype, um, which we hope that you as students love because you know, we genuinely believe that this version of views closes both the listening gap and the service design and standards gap that we talked about earlier on. So yeah, as I said, that was just a small part of the larger video that we made to show our class. And this was such a valuable feedback to get from other students because, you know, after you know eight to 10 weeks of thinking and investing time into this prototype, we were able to get that information required to iterate it, to make it as good as it could be. And it's a really fulfilling process. Um, and it's hard to explain, you know, when there's a problem and you've worked hard to understand it, and you've made a solution and then, then you take it to someone and you say, here, I made this. And, and you put it in front of them and you see their eyes light up. And it's, and it's this feeling of how this thing that was just an idea in your head has become a reality and made a difference to someone else. And I know it's so simple. It's just a mock-up of a home page. We didn't even do any programming, but just to see the excitement in the faces of the students that we showed it to, like that made my day. And that's why this was, without a doubt, one of my favorite assignments ever, because I wasn't just learning information, I, I was using it to solve a problem. And I was solving a problem for someone else. And, and, and it gave me a glimpse of, you know, th this is what I want to be doing in the future, more of this um, in my career, etc. And we ended up doing really well in the assignment um, after we submitted the report. Um, our, our teachers really liked it. Um, they were very supportive of us. In fact, they encouraged us to send it to the IT department of Western Sydney University, um, which we eventually did. And after a bit of back and forth, we, we completely underestimated how big a task it actually is to change these large university systems. And we had no understanding of the programming that goes into it, 
the back end of the system that supports these things, the academic experience, because academics are using the same platform on the other end to provide us with materials. And so um, it, it taught us some very valuable lessons that, that we, we do need to research the problem more um, and, and involve all the stakeholders in the process in our decision making for the future. And, and so while that didn't lead to the most um, optimal outcome, I was really content just with the experience of getting to do something like that as a student. And, and, and full credit to the teaching staff and subject coordinator of the Service Enterprise Unit that created curriculum that made us as students feel that way. I feel like in the past I'd been so used to doing tests, assignments, reports, where even if I was enjoying understanding the content, I was just regurgitating it back to a teacher who already knew all that information. But what made this assignment special was we had the opportunity to take the knowledge we were learning and apply it in a creative way to solve a problem that hadn't been solved before. And there was no one there to handhold us along the way. There was no one there to tell us exactly what to do. We had to figure it out. We had to ask the right questions. We had to make prototypes. We had to make mistakes, fail and learn from it. And you know what the coolest realization I had out of this process was? Um, you know, on my channel, I talk about learning being a process of two parts. It's about breaking things down through asking questions and being curious and analytical, and then building it back up in your own way, whether that be making a page of notes, making a presentation, etc. And, and what's really interesting is that's the same process you can use to solve problems. You, you know, you start by being curious and asking yourself, what's the problem? Why does it exist? Who is it for? What is it for? How could it be better? And then with all those questions, you can go and get the information you need from your surveys, your research, your textbook, the customers. And, and then you have to synthesize something, for example, a prototype that attempts to solve the problem. And it might not work and it might be flawed, but then you get feedback and in the process you iterate and you move towards making things better. And you're doing this in a team of people. And so you've got to learn to communicate better. You've got to learn to organize your time. You've got to learn to organize your skills so that the right people are doing the right roles and contributing to the project. All of which are things you will need no matter what your career is in the real world. So whether you're a scientist researching solutions to cancer or a teacher planning out lesson plans for her tutorial or a filmmaker mapping out a scene for a movie or, or even just someone running a restaurant. These are the sorts of skills we all need to you know, solve the problems we need to solve in the future. So West of Sydney, although you haven't fixed up your view site, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for allowing us to do this kind of assignment. The kind that's practical, hands-on, and allows us to be creative. And I hope this video will inspire more students and teachers around the world to engage in that kind of curriculum. The kind of curriculum that inspires you to solve problems, to work in teams, and to do things that haven't been done before. Because in my opinion, that's what university should be about.